Skip Bayless is one of the most hated figures in sports media. In many ways, he represents the worst of the craft. Clinging to flimsy arguments that you know he would otherwise not be making because he has some narrative to push, among the roster of intolerable analysts, he's clearly the one who most embodies the term hater. I've got Akeem, I've got Oscar, i got Dr. J. These are all better than Steph right here, right now. I've got David Robinson. You, you think not? No. Carl Malone, no. second all-time leading scorer. No. Right? Oh, stop it. No. I, I got Bill Walton. It, no. Oh, stop it. No. You yeah. have no idea what you're talking about. So with that in mind, the question that I have for today's video is why, in spite of that, is Skip Bayless so wildly successful? Skip has a net worth of $17 million, and he has an annual salary as of recently of $8 million. And with him being one of the biggest faces of Fox Sports, it's clear that his brand makes money. It makes good money, which means that there is a clear demand for what he does. But why? Why do sports fans have an interest in watching a man relentlessly hate on athletes in a way that is clearly manufactured and over the top? And what does it say about these sports fans and sports media that Skip can leverage that interest into a fruitful career as an analyst? Welcome to NBA Deep Dive. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall into that 50%, then please subscribe. Also, in all but one of the five deep dives that are out now, I have set a light goal of 10,000, and four out of five times, y'all have reached that goal. So, can this video get 10,000 likes? It would be much appreciated. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Skip Bayless started his sports career not as an analyst, but as a journalist, which is the typical trajectory unless you're an athlete, so you can just skip to the front of the line by default, even if you aren't particularly skilled as an analyst. Gradually, Skip worked his way into being on television, appearing on multiple other people's shows, and then that leveraged into him getting his own show, where he has since coasted on that momentum to where he is today. Skip is most widely known for his hatred of LeBron James. When you look up Skip Bayless on YouTube, one of the first things that autofills is Skip Bayless LeBron James, and that is for good reason. Skip Bayless has had essentially a parasitic relationship with LeBron's career for his entire career as an analyst. Skip Bayless became a household name through hating on LeBron James. Sure, he had a TV career before LeBron was even in the league, but he really blossomed as soon as he leaned into that. It was through LeBron that he gained his popularity. If LeBron did something great, Skip was there to downplay it, and if he did something not so great, he was happy to tell you why that was the end of the world for him, and that meant he would never be better than Michael Jordan. And please bear in mind that when I call Skip a LeBron hater, I do not throw that term around loosely. In general, I think that term is very much overused because the term hater outright implies that you hate the man, when in general, I think people say that for people who are just being critical. But for Skip Bayless, either he hates LeBron James or he is acting like it. So, with Skip being who he is, naturally he had a field day in 2011, and in 2016 when LeBron averaged 30, 11, and 9 in the finals, led his team to a 3-1 comeback, and capped that off over the most iconic plays in NBA history, Skip was happy to downplay that. May I just say, and I'm sure you will echo me, Mr. Smith, congratulations to Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a big fan of Cleveland, Ohio, and you folks deserve that after 52 years. I hear every point you just made, and let me start my points by congratulating LeBron James, who obviously was terrific in those last three games. But Stephen A. Smith, I am sorry, but I cannot get around or get over what the Golden State Warriors did not do in the fourth quarter of a game seven for all the marbles at Roracle Arena with the game on the line. This clip is really interesting to me specifically because first of all, he opens it up by not congratulating LeBron or even just the Cavaliers. He congratulates the city of Cleveland and then says the phrase, I'm a big fan of Cleveland, Ohio. And look, I'm sorry, 
people from Cleveland, but that's the first time anyone has ever said that. You like it? You think Cleveland's cool? I mean, I never heard anybody say I'm going to Cleveland on vacation. I mean, what's so good about Cleveland? But then he immediately turns the conversation from the Cavaliers and their success and LeBron's success over to the Warriors' failures. Now, that is a big part of the 2016 finals and it makes sense to talk about it, but to immediately make that the starting point of the conversation is a tad bit suspect to me. And what I find most interesting is this little grimace, this face of pain that he has when he is giving LeBron credit. I hear every point you just made. It actually physically pains him to give credit to LeBron James. That's, I'll, I'll give him credit for really being into this, whether it be acting or reality. He is very convincing. There's quite a bit more to go into with this clip. He pretty much turns the conversation over to why Kyrie should have won finals MVP, which is obviously ridiculous if you watch that series. But sitting here and disproving every little thing that Skip Bayless has said that is just blatantly wrong and stupid, would A, be too easy and B, be a waste of all of our times. All I'm trying to illustrate here is that Skip Bayless is unwavering. Regardless of the context, Skip will take the most negative possible angle on anything that LeBron does without hesitation. Oh, LeBron is the finals MVP of one of the greatest final series and the greatest comeback in NBA history. Let me see how I can take credit away from him. Let's see. Oh, uh, the Warriors choked. Uh, Kyrie hit a big shot, so actually he's finals MVP. It's not difficult. What I just said was a very basic thought process. It's not hard to do what Skip Bayless does. But the question in this video is why does Skip Bayless behave the way that he does? And really, why is that behavior incentivized? Well, like I said, there's a demand for it. There's a few camps that Skip Bayless takes advantage of. There's people who are right there with him. They hate LeBron James and they enjoy nothing more than tuning into the the designated king of hating on LeBron to hear what narratives they can spin at the office later. I don't think that needs too much of an explanation. LeBron is one of the most hated athletes of all time, if not the most hated. So of course there's a market for those people. There's also a big chunk of people who hate watch Skip, which I think is a bigger phenomenon than people give it credit for. It's something we've seen a lot recently with both Logan and Jake Paul. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about them, I apologize. These guys profit off of how much people don't like them. Damn near everybody that tuned into Logan Paul versus KSI was doing so because they wanted to see the Suicide Forest guy get his shit kicked in. When it was Jake versus Nate Robinson, Nate went out cold early into the fight, and while everyone memed on him as the internet is one to do, the sentiment that led to people really shitting on Nate is that people were rooting for Nate to kick Jake's ass, and instead they got, well, this. <laughs> Here's the thing, while the desire to watch both Logan and Jake Paul get their teeth kicked in makes plenty of sense because they're Logan and Jake Paul, they are profiting off of your desire to see that. Logan Paul versus KSI is tied for the 21st biggest pay-per-view event in history. The more y'all hate on them, the more money they make. Which pisses me off quite a bit because I continue to see this pattern repeat itself and people continue to give them attention, but this pattern also repeats itself with Skip Bayless. I guarantee you that a large percentage of the people tuning into Fox Sports or First Take back when he worked with Stephen A. Smith were tuning in so they could watch either Shannon or Stephen A. or whatever guest they had on put Skip into his place for being such a blind hater. And then three is another big chunk of his audience. In fact, probably the largest one, and that is just casual NBA fans or sports fans in general who don't really think about it too much. They don't have strong opinions about other analyst opinions, so they're not really annoyed by it all that much. The structure of these shows mean that there's a guy on the other side of the table who's going to counter the points of Skip, often just as much in the extreme, just in the opposite direction. So as long as they hear an opposition, they're generally content. And they also generally don't think about it too much. It's just background entertainment. There's no reason to think so deeply about fucking ESPN or Fox Sports like I am right now. 
These three groups accumulate into Skip's viewership. Those who strongly support him, those who strongly oppose, and those who are just indifferent. And Skip has leveraged this audience into a very, very successful career, which I can somewhat commend. If you have a value, which Skip does, go and earn that value. Even if it's kind of a shitty value, it is value. When Skip signed a $32 million extension with Fox Sports, the general reaction was, wow, Skip is making that much money to hate on LeBron. But for me, I mean, it makes sense. Skip brings in enough viewership to be worth eight figures. They wouldn't pay him that way if that wasn't the case. His name and what he does has that pull. So it makes sense that Fox Sports would pay him like it. What's sad about Skip Bayless is not that Fox Sports gave him a ton of money and he's earned a ton of money throughout his career. That just made business sense. What's sad is that it does make business sense. What's sad is that society and sports fans have deemed that what Skip does is worthy of that money. The market determines worth, and really, humans collectively just decide what things are worth. When you're watching Skip Bayless bullshit about LeBron, you are making a choice with your viewership, saying, this is worth my attention, worth my time, and that attention and time spanning over millions of people over decades equals millions in Skip Bayless's pockets. The problem with Skip Bayless is not Skip himself. The problem is what he represents, a market for hate. Whether you are appealing to someone's hatred as the bastion of truth, standing up to whatever belief or institution you can think of, this is the guy that gets it. I'm going to support that guy. Or giving them somebody to hate. Get people to root for your downfall so much that they are the reason you succeed in the first place. You can make a career out of hating on some of the most successful and talented athletes of all time because there is a market for that. And what's sad about this, and what the sad truth of all of this is, is that this goes a lot further than just Skip Bayless. That's how Skip Bayless became a professional hater. I just busted right inside him. Well, would you look at that? Once again, I actually managed to make one of these, and honestly, this is maybe my favorite one thus far. So, again, if you have not already, drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more NBA content like this. But with that, that is all. Uh, cue the outro music.